As a longtime Call of Duty fan, I have never been more confused after playing Modern Warfare 3. This is either really good or really bad. Yet I have never seen things more clearly. No! Harry, no! Don't look at the light! I can't help it. It's so beautiful. Is Modern Warfare 3 worth the hype? Or is Modern Warfare 3 being overhyped by the Call of Duty community? Activision desperately wants your $100, so you better not F this up. You do not want to make the same mistake you made with Modern Warfare 2 last year. You're broke! You're fucking poor! I think it's pretty safe to say that Sledgehammer was handed an absolute layup with Modern Warfare 3, and it has come with a lot of hype. The new Warzone map was announced. It feels very similar to Verdansk, by the way, along with the return of fan favorites Rebirth Island and Fortune's Keep an all-new Zombies Outbreak mode, the return of War mode from Call of Duty World War II, improved game mechanics, no more useless Dead Silence field upgrade, and more positive changes coming to Modern Warfare 3. All this releasing just one year after arguably the worst Call of Duty of all time, Modern Warfare 2 2022. So the bar could not have been set any lower going from MW2 to MW3. All eyes are now on Sledgehammer Games, the lead developer of Modern Warfare 3 2023. Will the positives of MW3 make it the best Call of Duty in years? Or will the negatives of MW3 extend our misery after Vanguard and MW2? Be sure to subscribe to the one and hit that like button. You're going to absolutely love this video. If you don't, I will probably still reply to your hate comment if that makes you feel any better. All right, you Call of Duty vets and COD suckers. It's time for the one to break down the Modern Warfare 3 beta. Enjoy the video. Before we discuss the negatives that make Modern Warfare 3 bad, let's talk about the positives that make Modern Warfare 3 good. The things that'll make you smile. Kinda like your money makes Activision smile. So, the Modern Warfare 3 maps, or should I say the beloved OG Modern Warfare 2 maps. Although limited and remastered, I have one word for these maps. Refreshing. I'm sure every one of you would agree with that, let's be honest. Reliving the old OG Modern Warfare 2 maps from 2009 was a blast to play through with friends, just like we used to back in the day. Yes, even with those... doors. Alright, you can shut the f Arguably the best map so far in MW3 may be a bit shocking, but Skid Row played the best, and that seems to be the general consensus among the Call of Duty community, especially during Weekend 1. What makes Skidmark, I mean Skid Row, arguably the best map in Modern Warfare 3 is the flow. It plays generally faster, in my experience, other than Rust, obviously, but we'll get into that in a moment. Especially on objective-based modes, like Domination and Hardpoint, it was a lot more fast-paced and enjoyable. High Rise is a map I love to play through again, though. You could argue this is the best map from OG MW2, and the best in the MW3 beta, but man, I just remember one of the most iconic moments in COD history happening on this map. Roll the clip. Oh! Oh my god! Oh! Oh my fucking god! Legendary moment, all you OGs remember that one. I also commend Sledgehammer Games for keeping the hidden spots or easter eggs on High Rise. Maneuvering your way onto the roof and onto the platforms is still fun to this day 14 years later. Man, it's crazy to say that out loud. I remember it basically where the trick shotters used to go back when FaZe really kicked off and changed the culture. Amazing times back then in Call of Duty, you had to be there. F for all the paste eaters who came from Fortnite. Don't take it personal, it's a joke. Rust was also in the MW3 beta, and I have to say it was the most fun I had while playing the game. We all know damn well it's gonna be the camel grinding simulator until they add shipment back in, probably. The COD community's gonna be like, hey, uh, Sledgehammer, we, we know we just complained all year in MW2 that shipment was oversaturated, even though that's the only map we played on all year thanks to Infinity Turret's historically bad maps. But yeah, we, we want it back again to grind these camos. Rust isn't good enough, and you know what? Now that I'm thinking about it, why don't we just throw Shipment, Rust, and Shoot House all into one playlist? Let's call it Recycled Warfare. Yeah, clown, we might as well call it Recycled Warfare 3. It's ridiculous. We'll save that talk for later. Favela was another map in the MW3 beta. And well, honestly, this map plays like utter sh**. It was absolutely the worst experience for me out of all the maps, and that's sad to say considering this is one of my favorite maps from the old MW2. All I'm gonna say is, thank God for the return of map voting. 
which is another great aspect of this game. I don't know what I would have done if I had to play on that godforsaken map again. And it's funny too because I noticed no one else was voting for it either, so everyone seems to be on the same page here. It's obviously not a map problem, it's one of the greatest maps ever. The problem is Infinity Ward completely brainwashing the entire Call of Duty community into playing this weird, campy, statue sentinel playstyle. It's unbearable to play against. And everything blends in with each other on Favela, so it makes it even hard to make out the enemy. I'm personally holding out hope for the Call of Duty community to come to the realization, huh, I can actually move. I'm not playing Modern Warfare 2 2022 anymore. But honestly, it just seems like they're just, they're just fine, sitting on a roof, seeing little to no action, so I'm afraid Modern Warfare 3 may also be rat infested by default. Please Treyarch reverse the curse in 2024. And lastly, we have Estate. Estate had the lowest expectations going into the MW3 beta, since it is one of the least popular maps to play on back in the day on MW2. It gets a lot of hate, but honestly, this map feels noticeably different in Modern Warfare 3 versus the old Modern Warfare 2, to me personally. Don't get me wrong, people still camped back then, but Call of Duty plays so much slower nowadays, thanks Infinity Turd. But let's face it, you can't rush on Estate, you just have to accept it. Don't even try it. To me, I kind of get that overgrown from COD 4 kind of vibe, where you can just kind of sit back and chill. I was shocked by how much I enjoyed Estate and getting rid of all that foliage from the original map in front of the house definitely helped in terms of visibility on the map. So yeah, Estate was a pleasant surprise to me, not saying it's great. Nevertheless, as much as the OG MW2 maps are a positive to Modern Warfare 3, I still believe it was a scumbag move by Activision to hold these out all year last year with MW2 2022 just to market it as a selling point for this overglorified patch update but I'm mainly covering how Modern Warfare 3 honestly plays. And the maps are definitely one of the strong points of Modern Warfare 3 thus far in the beta, and it will be so much better once we're able to play all the OG MW2 maps when the game is fully released. With that being said, it's time to get into the next positive aspect of Modern Warfare 3, movement. Sledgehammer promised that the movement in Modern Warfare 3 would be completely better than Modern Warfare 2 last year. Were they telling the truth? Absolutely yes. If you didn't play the MW3 beta, or even if you did get to play it, MW3 feels a lot smoother and obviously a lot faster, which is why I like it a lot more. Yes, slide cancelling is back, which is very controversial for some stupid reason. One side favors slide cancelling because it creates a wider skill gap in terms of the higher skilled players, or movement lords as I like to call them. The movement lords know how to utilize it to their own advantage in gunfights. This began in Modern Warfare 2019 in Warzone, and this obviously pisses off all the mouth breathers who don't know their thumb from their ass, and they're just sitting there with their heads spinning while the TTV movement lord just dropped their asses literally within a matter of milliseconds. Me personally, I'm quite literally split on this debate. I am on the side of creating a wider skill gap. If you don't like it, get better, quit playing, or cry about it in the comments. But I'm also on the side of no slide cancelling because I'm just not the biggest fan of a bunch of cracked out on G Fuel weirdos dragging their nuts around the entire map like their lives depend on it. And then they think they actually accomplished something by going 27 and 22 on domination. Like what are you doing? The nut dragging. But yeah, aside from the slide cancelling drama, the most important factor in movement is something I've not touched on yet. Perks. Perks are another positive aspect of Modern Warfare 3, and a massive upgrade over Modern Warfare 2's garbage perk package system. The f*** was Infinity War thinking, or why weren't they thinking is the better question. The new MW3 perk system is a massive upgrade over MW2's because it's fundamentally organized and classic. There are normally three perk slots in Call of Duty multiplayer, but Modern Warfare 3 technically has four. I'll break it all down right here for you, very simply. So Modern Warfare 3's new perk system is gear based, which is a new concept in Call of Duty. First up we got the gloves. There are three glove perks. Quick Rip, Commando, and Scavenger Gloves, which is my personal go-to and what I find most useful to my playstyle. Next up we have 5 Boots perks, Lightweight Boots, which is what I like to use as well since it increases movement speed, and I like to actually move, unlike these corner camping pace eating Infinity Ward fanboys. But other than that, there's also Climbing Boots, Stalker Boots, Tactical Pads, and Covert Sneakers. In other words, Dead Silence. The criminal thing Sledgehammer did was withhold you being able to unlock the covert sneakers in the first weekend of the beta, even though that was one of the main selling points of Modern Warfare 3. But yeah, once I was able to unlock that, you better believe I equipped them damn sneakers right away to eliminate my elephant herd footsteps. Another skew to Infinity Ward, I love it. Next up we got 6 gear perks, EOD padding or flak jacket, and tack mask are the first two you unlock, which is pretty convenient since that's normally what I use, but listen to the rest of these, the names start getting goofy. So next up we got Mission Control Comlink which reduces killstreak cost by one. In other words, it's hardline, so just f***ing call it that. Why do we have to keep making these names so damn long when it's clearly unnecessary? Next up, we have the Bone Conduction Headset. You know, if I had conducted a bone prior to reading the name of this perk, it's gone now. Oh, it's a boy! That's its tail. It's a girl! Next, we got the Laser Slash Radiation Detection, 
which I'll give him a pass on this one since you can abbreviate the L and R. But last and not least, we got the Ghost Perk, which is good, so the mouth-breathing campers can't get away with too much. But in MW3, it's called Ghost T slash V Camel. I'm just like, at this point, are these COD devs forced to come up with unnecessary, long-ass, annoying names for maps and perks? Anyway, the last perk slot is the Vest, and the Vest is easily the most unique perk. It stands out from the gloves, boots, and gear. Allow me to explain. First off, we got the Infantry Vest, which increases tax sprint duration and reduces refresh time. Very good for all my movement lords out there, it's what I've been using. Also, if you're using running sneakers with the Infantry Vest, you additionally gain the effects of lightweight boots. Next, we have the Engineer Vest, which is essentially the Engineer perk, along with faster field upgrade recharge. The only problem with it is it takes away your lethal, but it does give you an extra tactical. However, the best part about the Engineer Vest is that it enables you to use two gear perks. For example, you'll be able to run EOD padding or flat jacket and tack mask. After that, we got the Gunner Vest. The Gunner Vest deploys you with max ammo and increases your reload speed, or what we COD vets know as the old sleight of hand perk or fast mag attachment. The negatives of this perk is it removes your boots perk, but if you have mag holster equipped, then you will also gain the effects of the mission comm link or hardline perk we clowned earlier. But the best part about this vest is it gives you overkill, or the ability to hold two primary weapons so you can have fun creating your own OP classes that way. Lastly, we have the Demolition Vest. This vest resupplies lethal and tactical equipment every 25 seconds and gives you an extra lethal. Unless they update this perk, it's honestly kind of useless. But overall, I do approve of this perk system. Although it introduces a new gear-based system and concept, it still functions fundamentally, which is why I say perks are a positive in Modern Warfare 3 thus far. Time to kill is another positive in Modern Warfare 3. I know a lot of you may be cussing me out right now, but at first I was frustrated with the slower time to kill as well, I'll admit it. I get it man, you didn't like the increase in time to kill, but I am so over the first to shoot gets the kill nonsense. Slower TTK rewards the more skilled player with better accuracy and coordination. I know it's a tough adjustment going from Modern Warfare 2, who am I kidding? I adjusted to it after one day of the beta. You'll get used to it. Unless you're an Infinity Ward fanboy. You're gonna have to suffer like us Treyarch fanboys did for the past two years with Vanguard and MW2. Have fun, you cod suckers. Now, before I get into the negatives of Modern Warfare 3, I want to quickly cover a few positive additions that I genuinely enjoyed. The Breacher Drone is a lethal that I absolutely loved using. I can't really explain it, but it was just so fun to use for me personally, and it is so satisfying when you get a kill with it. it oh, it did! It got... It got... <laughs> oh, shit! Dude, I love that thing. So yeah, the Breacher Drone single-handedly made my experience on MW3 a lot more enjoyable. Another minor addition I enjoyed using was a new Hunter Killer Drone Killstreak, or Mosquito Drone, in MW3. It works very similar to the OG Hunter Killer from Black Ops 2. Just throw it up in the air, and it'll target an enemy and get the kill for you. Very satisfying and easy killstreak to earn, unless you have no thumbs. Oh! I got him. Okay, that was weird. Now, this next edition I'm about to call a positive may be a bit controversial, but I absolutely love the ACS. The fact that I can capture a flag on domination without actually being on the flag and capture a hardpoint without actually being on the hardpoint is amazing to me. You can be an objective player without playing the objective. Some people say it's cheesy, and I totally respect that they disagree with me on that. Dickheads. Now, for the moment you all have been waiting for, or at least the COD bets. I'm about to present to you the bad of Modern Warfare 3, and let me tell you, it gets pretty ugly. But before that, I just want to remind you all to subscribe to the one. Look at this, about 98% of you are not subscribed to the one yet. You know you're enjoying this video, and you got plenty more to watch and be entertained by. So feel free to subscribe, hit that like button, comment your thoughts on MW3. Thank you my fellow gaming warriors, I salute you. Now, it's time to take a steaming dump on Modern Warfare 3. Here's the bad. First of all, I want to discuss cheaters. Yes, I told you all they'd be back. In that beta, you're going to be hearing all kinds of complaints about cheaters and hackers, guaranteed, just like MW2. Call of Duty has become so predictable with this nonsense. Clips of hackers and cheaters were going viral, and we're all just sitting there like... I hate so much about the things that you choose to be. It's very clear that Activision is going to do nothing to fix cheaters in Call of Duty. Some are holding on hope for Microsoft, but I honestly doubt they'll care either. All they care about is securing your weekly checks for the cringe bundles. Keep in mind, this was happening before it was open to PC, so you can't blame that. Cheating clearly happens in a multitude of ways, and there's nothing we can do to stop the nerds. Only Activision has that ability. But as we know... I'm here to tell you right now, we don't care. Let me tell, right, let me tell you <laughs> We don't care. Jerry. In even better news, our old friend has stuck around another year. Shocker. Skill-based matchmaking. 
and it is stronger than ever. Unfortunately, I am not exaggerating. Every game seems like everyone in the lobby is sitting around the same score, around a 1kd. You'll be lucky to get 30 kills in TDM nowadays, it's insane! I had this one game where I went like 15 and 100 on Rust, and it felt like I couldn't even control anything, it felt so weird and off. Next game, the total opposite, on Favela of all maps, my least favorite map where I normally feel totally off. Not to mention how you get random lag spikes and the hit detection screws up whenever you go on a streak. It's obvious that Call of Duty is rigged at this point, how can you deny it? But unfortunately, skill-based matchmaking, or engagement-optimized matchmaking, whatever you want to call it, is going nowhere when it comes to Call of Duty. Activision has figured out the Fortnite formula of selling cringe bundles to a bunch of 12-year-olds, and with that comes a matchmaking system which increases retention for the casual gamer, and makes them feel inclined to buy these bundles to have their desired nerd skins. Although I do believe sales will drop off from MW2, if Modern Warfare 3 turns out to be even decent, then you better believe even more people will be buying into Treyarch's COD in 2024. And that means skill-based matchmaking is here to stay! Yay. Now let's discuss Modern Warfare 3's visibility problem. The amount of times I fired clips at my teammates because I thought they were the enemies, and the amount of times I didn't shoot at enemies because I thought they were my teammates. I couldn't tell you, I really couldn't. It's the same problem we've had since Modern Warfare 2019, where you seem to lose sight of the enemy when you aim at him. It is totally ass backwards. In Modern Warfare 3, you need to use an optic, even on SMGs. The iron sights ironically block your vision of the enemy you're aiming at. Sledgehammer has got to adjust the character's visibility within the map environment. Everyone blends in with everything, and make the nameplates bigger. I'd even recommend a perk like Marksman from the original MW3. To be honest with you guys, the only weapon I don't use for an optic is the Honey Badger, or the Bass Beat Battle Rifle. Which I guess goes into my next complaint, weapon variety. Weapon variety has been a problem for years in Call of Duty, and it is glaring in Modern Warfare 3. I can count how many weapons are usable on one hand. The ACR is easily the best weapon in MW3, or MCW as it's called in MW3. Which by the way is extremely annoying, calling all these classic weapons different names, add that onto the list. But the UMP or the Striker is the only competition for the ACR I'd say. Very overpowered SMG. The Renetti pistol is also OP, because you can literally turn it into a 50 mag SMG. It absolutely shreds, and I highly recommend trying this sucker out. The Honey Badger as I mentioned earlier, or Bass B, is also a weapon I discovered to be a machine. It feels so good to me, and you can build it really well to become a strong all-around weapon. And lastly, I recommend the Longbow Sniper. We're talking a 25 round mag with a chest up one shot kill. Plus it has a pretty fast ADS speed, it can keep up with the best of them boys. But other than these 5 weapons, it's just a crapshoot. Everyone was using these in the beta. Now, I'm, I'm gonna make this very clear. We do not want you to nerf these weapons, Sledgehammer. Just make the weaker weapons stronger. It's a much more enjoyable experience when you feel like you can legitimately compete with any weapon, have weapon balance, versus this meta nonsense. And the meta. Next, I want to talk kill streaks. There were only a limited amount of streaks in the MW3 beta, so I can't really critique too much, other than the fact that there weren't much variety. But obviously there will be a lot more streaks on the day of the full release. The SAE is pretty good, I liked using the Mosquito Drone as I mentioned earlier, and the Juggernaut was pretty fun to use, although it was kind of weak, but it was only an 8 kill streak, so you really can't expect much from it. But that's all I got on the streaks honestly, just looking forward to the new ones coming to Modern Warfare 3 on its release. Here's something that really needs to get talked about, spawns. I can confidently tell you that these spawns in the MW3 beta were the absolute worst I have ever experienced, especially on high rise. The only pattern I could figure out was that they'd spawn everywhere you're not looking, especially after you go on a streak. It's tied in with the whole skill-based matchmaking deal as well, so there's nothing we can really do. The spawns are rigged and it's infuriating to deal with. Please fix this sledgehammer, it got pretty unbearable at times. Also, can we talk about the UI? Literally nothing has changed from Modern Warfare 2. It's that same cluttered, horizontal, hard to follow Hulu interface. Why can't Call of Duty do away with this? For instance, the vest perk is laid out totally separate from the other three perk slots and above the entire class setup. I found this very strange, it took me a while to realize it was even there. And it's kind of weird, because you think because the vest being above everything in the class setup would suggest some sort of significance, something that would change the entire concept of a loadout, but I just don't think it has that much significance. So it, it was just confusing to me, and something that annoyed the hell out of me. Searching for friends is still a pain in the ass. Call of Duty still has your friends laid out horizontally, they need to fix the class setup layouts as well. Why can't we bring back the old Call of Duty vertical interface layout? It was way easier to follow, and I didn't feel like my head was going to explode. Again, Call of Duty trying to fix things that were not broken. I could complain about glitches and bugs, but honestly for a beta, I did not have a bad experience with it. I heard of there being a way on a state where you could just get under the map and crap like that, but I can't complain too much, especially for a beta. You may have had a different experience, 
but I'm just speaking from mine and from what I saw on social media. It didn't seem too bad, generally speaking. But I also feel like the limited problems in this beta was due to the fact that it is literally a patch update to Modern Warfare 2. So all Sledgehammer had to do was take MW2 and fix it. Pretty crazy it's being released as a premium release for $70 or $100, right? However, I will give credit to Sledgehammer for responding well to the COD community on issues that needed to be fixed, unlike Infinity Turret with MW2. Battle Rage got nerfed quickly and I was so relieved because it simply made MW3 unplayable. The amount of bullets you could eat in one life by simply getting shot and taking cover. I don't know which clown came up with that bright idea over a Sledgehammer, but smell you later. Overall, it truly was encouraging to see Sledgehammer constantly roll out updates throughout the beta on things like visibility and movement adjustments. It's promising to see this already in the beta, so if Sledgehammer continues this going into the full release, it will make a lot more people more likely to buy MW3 this year. But I'd recommend waiting to see what they do because let's not forget about Vanguard and how that became progressively worse over time. I will be making my official review on Modern Warfare 3 once it's fully released in November. So if you're considering buying MW3 still, wait until you see that video. It's going to be a big one. It's going to be the best. But yeah, guys, this is what makes Modern Warfare 3 good and bad. You can weigh out both sides and see what you think, but honestly, this beta was much better than MW2 last year, and there will be much more content to look forward to in the full release, so we shall see. But that also doesn't take away from the fact that the game is a scam. It's a double-edged sword. Comment what you all think of Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 2023's beta. What would you rate it out of 10? Remember to subscribe to Dewan because you're an elite gaming warrior and hit that like button because you enjoyed this video. Also share this video for everyone to make up their minds on Modern Warfare 3. I presented to you the good and the bad. Now it's up to you to decide whether to buy MW3, skip it, or wait for my full review after the game's official release. Alright my fellow gaming warriors, one more thing I gotta tell you. I am a sentinel. Tis been one.